Hello everyone and welcome to my chapter 4 and 5 Pride and Prejudice revision video. Before we continue, I would like to draw your attention to my wonderful blog for Do Say So Myself. Have a look at it if you haven't already done so, so you can see the link on the screen right there. Right, today um, we are going to look at the most important themes, characters and of course events in chapters 4 and 5 of the novel. So chapter 4 focuses on sisterly love between Elizabeth and Jane. Mr. Bingley's sisters, and of course more about Bingley and Darcy's friendship. Chapter 5 focuses on the Lucases and Darcy's pride. Okay. Also, I have a, one tip for you, which um, is when you read a novel, you must focus on characters and themes that run throughout, as that is what, it, as that is what you will be tested in the exam. Okay, so make sure that when you create your own revision notes, um, always look and make notes on characters and themes. But of course you do have to know events and what happens in um, the novel, the first thing. Okay, so let's look at uh, the strong bond between Elizabeth and Jane. So both sisters reveal some further traits here. Obviously we saw that they had a strong bond before, but as the novel continues we can see that running throughout. Okay, so we can see that Jane is very humble as she says, I was very much flattered by his asking me to dance a second time. I did not expect such a compliment. Elizabeth, on the other hand, is very assured that Jane is the best looking lady, along with, of course, other worthy, worthy traits. And she says, he could not help seeing that you are about five times as pretty as every other woman in the room. Obviously, she also claims that Jane is a virtuous woman and that she's very good looking since she will never speak ill of anybody. This shows uh, that Elizabeth is in awe of her sister. Um, I think there are other two themes that I would consider uh, to be of a huge consequence here. Um, and they would be family, as we can see from their bond. And also the unconditional love, because obviously they're um, they're both sisters, and therefore they're going to love each other no matter what happens. So I think these are the two most important things as well in this particular um, chapter. And now I have another uh, sh short little tip for you here, which I think is very very important. Obviously, being a teacher and having marked exams for a long time, I think it's important to note that you need to use short and yet effective quotations. So as you can see on the screen, um, I've used a very long quotations uh, to kind of show my point to you. But in the exam, it is, um, well, the examiner's one short yet effective quotation. So for example, uh, you can shorter, shorten Jane's response to just, I didn't expect such a compliment, and then explain um, how obviously um, Mr. Bingley asked her to dance a second time. Okay, so Mr. Bingley's sisters are um, also play a vital part in chapter four, although they are not really present in flesh in this chapter. Okay, so that really shows um, more about the sisters. Okay, so the Bennet sisters converse about them in this, um, and this further shows what the protagonists of the novel are like. Okay, so Bingley's sisters have certainly left their mark on um, Bennet's sisters. Okay, so Jane seems to like or to be impressed by them. Okay, so she says, I am, I am much mistaken if we shall not find a very charming neighbour in her. And this is, of course, of Mrs. Bingley. Okay, so she kind of imagines imagines herself to be very friendly with her now that they've moved into the neighborhood. Okay, um, however, Elizabeth is not bemused by them. She knows that they are um, proud and conceited, and obviously that's a bit harsh, uh, but also she notes um, that they are entitled to think well of themselves and meanly of others so of course they're going to be um because of their status and because of their wealth and class and um, they're going to think well of themselves because they're upper class and of course will look down and snare those who are of a um lesser class okay or uh lower class rather and here we can see a huge contrast between the sisters as jane cannot think ill of them and this shows her kind of naivety um, while Elizabeth is proud and also she's prejudiced against the Bingley sisters and she feels that just because they are wealthy that they will not be 
um, that they will be arrogant and also she's also unwilling to trust them and kind of shows her own pride if that makes sense so Elizabeth skeptical of the sisters says they're proud and they're not really nice people and yet because of her own pride and she's being obviously very proud towards them and prejudiced and saying that just because they are rich and are have and obviously are of upper class that they will not be very good people okay and we can see here the pride both Elizabeth and of course um the Bingleys, we can see the prejudice, and uh, we can see family, and of course, very big class gap. Now, moving on to the men, as you can see, I've included two lovely pictures of the two men. Um, so, their friendship in this particular um, chapter has also been noted. The narrator tells the reader that it is a steady friendship, okay? So, therefore, it doesn't seem that they're going to fall out anytime soon. Okay, um, so Mr. Bingley is described uh, that he has easiness, openness, and ductility of his temper. Okay, so he's very easy to get along with. Okay, he's easy, he's open with everybody, and says what he thinks. Um, and obviously, Bingley had the firmest reliance and the quote continues highest opinion of Mr. Darcy. Okay, and obviously, um, there is a reliance between Mr. Bingley and Mr. Darcy. And Mr. Bingley is also um, described as um, being a man who was liked wherever he appeared. Okay, so whoever he spoke to um, or wherever he went, um, every people used to always obviously uh, speak well of him and be uh, quite, you know, well, would speak well about him. Um, however, Mr. Darcy is the complete opposite of Mr. Bingley. But I do have to say that I do not think that it he's all negative even at this point in time i don't think that we can just justify him as being um, a negative fully negative character although he has a very a lot of negative traits in this part um of the novel of course there's some positive as well so he's described as superior which is not particularly a bad thing um and also he was very clever so that's also um, a positive trait. However, um, he's also described by the narrator haughty, reserved and fastidious and his manners, manners though well-bred, were not inviting. Okay, so haughty means um, arrogant. If you don't know what fastidious means, it means that he's very picky. Okay, so he does have uh, good manners, but he doesn't really socialize with people and he doesn't let those manners show. And of course, Darcy was continually giving offense to people wherever he went. So that's obviously uh, quite a negative thing. So we can obviously see more of the friendship and more about Mr. Bingley and Mr. Darcy as individuals. Moving to chapter five and looking at the most important events and characters, we come to the Lucases and a theme of class, okay? So I think theme of class is the most prominent here, okay? Um, Sir William Lucas had a business before he was knighted, and after this event, he felt that he had um, to have his business, or he had to leave his business, and it was giving him a disgust, as the narrative says, okay? So he moved into the area in which he now lives, in Lucas Lodge, okay? Um, we can really see here that he's trying to elevate his family to higher class, okay, since his knighthood, okay, so it says, uh, Sir William Lucas risen to the honour of knighthood, and because of this he felt the distinction has perhaps been felt too strong, okay, so therefore he felt that he's kind of of a higher class rather than, and you know, while he does socialise with um, the Bennets, okay, it's, we can still feel that he perhaps might think that he's just a little bit better than them, okay, or just a bit of a higher class than them. Okay, I have a few thinking points and uh, thinking points here for you because I do not want to spoon uh, or spoon feed you all the time. So really, I just wanted you to think about these two things. Okay, first thing is, um, Mrs. Bennet and Lady Lucas are friends. Okay, but it seems a kind of strange friendship um, because the narrative says um, that Lady Lucas was not too clever to be a valuable neighbour to Mrs. Bennet. Now of course we could say that's ironic because Mrs. Bennet isn't really uh, clever herself, okay? But d does that mean that Mrs. Bennet looks down on Lady Lucas? Okay. Um, maybe she's just a gossip friend? 
maybe Mrs. Bennet has no other kind of good friends. So there's a kind of a underlying issue there that I think is worth exploring. And I would like you to do, to do that yourself and come to your own conclusions. Another thing that I think is um, worth looking at is that Charlotte Lucas, being 27 years of age, is still unmarried. Now, of course, in our day, um, especially in Ireland, wherever you are, especially in Ireland, that's considered to be still young. And therefore, you do not, it's not... It's not, you know, if you're 27, you do not have to be married and nobody would look down um, on you. However, why does Austen do this in this particular novel? Okay, it's written in the 1800s and certainly by 27 and sometimes even 16, um, you know, as early as 16, you'd be married. Um, why does Austen do this? Is her character serving perhaps as a warning to other girls or what life is like if you're not married? Or maybe her character might show what happened to girls who weren't considered handsome. Okay, as we know before, Charlotte Lucas um, isn't described as the most handsome um, girl in the area. So perhaps Austin really plays with this and tries to get us thinking. Okay, so I would like you to do that yourself. Okay, the themes that come to mind here would be class, of course, between Lucas's and Bennett's, um, friendship. And also pride. And I would just like you to note how proud Miss Bennett is um, of Jane here. Okay, I would like you to find the quotation yourself and how well she thinks of Jane here. Okay, and the last important topic in chapter five is the valuation of Darcy's pride. And as we can see on the screen, all the women, with of course the exclusion of Jane, um, seem to condemn Darcy. Okay, Mrs. Bennet condemns Miss Darcy as she says he's such a disagreeable man. Now she doesn't really know him that much, but of course because he hurt um, Elizabeth's feelings, um, Miss Bennet doesn't think uh, Mr. Darcy is agreeable. Of course, Jane tries to see the good in him. He never speaks much unless among his intimate acquaintances. Okay, um, Lady Lucas tries to understand him, perhaps a little bit better, and she says there's an excuse for it, the pride, because obviously he's of a higher class, he has wealth and money, perhaps he doesn't necessarily want to be proud, but he doesn't want to socialise with people of a lower class. So Lady Lucas tries to understand him, although of course is kind of condemning him as well. Elizabeth further notes her humiliation in this chapter, and she says, which I would think is one of the most important quotations in um, the whole novel, of course. I could easily forgive his pride if he had not mortified mine. Okay, um, so that's quite um, a strong statement. Okay, perhaps she might not consider herself to be um, the most handsome lady, but of course, there's no need to kind of point it out and um, say so you know and of course she heard it so he did mortify her and he did kind of humiliate her as well and of course we see the pride we see the prejudice and we see um the marriage in this particular um chapter here as well okay now another thing that i would consider um of a certain significance is how chapter five ends Okay, maybe it's just me but i do find this quite funny okay um we can see a, a bit of humorous ending to the chapter because up to that point um all the women were discussing or gossiping about um mr darcy's pride and uh, evaluating him uh but in the end um mr bennett kind of argues with the young lucas boy um and really that's quite interesting because miss bennett shouldn't argue with a child she should just obviously being an adult uh remember that it doesn't really matter what the lucas boy uh, things because he's only quite young and just let it go however she argues and argues with the Lucas boy about pride and I think perhaps this might show her intellect or lack of um, or even her shallowness you know to kind of think that just because she's an adult um, she has to be always right which of course isn't always the case uh, but in this chapter she tries to show that she's always right Okay, so I think um, for me that was quite interesting and of course there are other things, underlying things there um, that you might want to discuss. Okay, so the last tip of this video is um, very, very important. Okay, if you're going, if you're going for an A or if you're in England and studying this particular um, novel and you're going for 
um, an A star if this is your GCSE and if it's, this is your A level text and of course it's just an A um, but I would always um, try to look at the language and structure which is of course the punctuation when analyzing character or a theme so i would make sure that i would look at irony i would look at contrast similarities i would look at pathetic fallacy i would look at punctuation exclamation marks um you know uh, questions and whatever else dashes hyphens so i would make sure that i consider how a character speak okay um so